Okay, um, let me just explain uh, a few little details before we um, conclude the lecture. So in practice, instead of uh, calculating the loss function by adding up all the losses for all training observations in the entire training set and or calculating the gradient of the loss function by adding the gradients for all the um, training observations. So we process uh, our training set by small batches. Yeah? So we split our big training set. So it has, it probably has like, I don't know, say 10,000 observations. And then we, we, we split it into small portions. And each of them is going to have 32 or 64 or maybe 128. So some power of two usually observations. Uh, it has to do with computer architecture. Sorry. Um, so every small set is called a batch, right? So, and then we're just going to, let's say when we update the, the, the gradient, so instead of just calculating the gradient with respect to um, all the parameters over all the training observations, so we, we do it over the first batch, then add plus the same, the same thing over the second batch, plus the third batch, and so on. And every time we update our, um, we update our uh, vector of parameters. So uh, this is going to be repeated until the whole training set has been processed. And one epoch is one run of the gradient descent of some modified gradient descent, some optimized gradient descent through the entire training set. So this is an epoch. Uh, now, parameters of uh, our artificial neural network are those that are updated through gradient descent or some modified version of gradient descent. So it's basically weights and biases. Hyperparameters are chosen before we even begin. So we choose like the weight decay or we can choose um, the number of layers in our neural networks. Right? So, and with that choice of hyperparameters, we train by running our gradient descent. And there are also some settings that are determined by the problem. So activation in the last layer. So activation in the last layer, we, are, we use sigmoid for binary classification, we use softmax for multi-class classification, and we use identity or linear activation for regression. Same for the loss function. So we use cross entropy for classification problems, and we use mean squared error or um, absolute squared uh, absolute mean absolute error for um, regression problems. Okay, now uh, deep neural networks they become effective when a lot of data are available, right? So. Now, for your project, I encourage you to try using neural networks. And if you are working with text mining or with image processing, then it is a good idea to try some deep neural networks. But don't be surprised if you can't achieve outstanding results. It's simply because you know, you, if you don't have a lot of data and you don't have a lot of training time, then this is the, probably the reason why you couldn't achieve spectacular results. Now, we have learned about fully connected neural networks. So in practice, uh, fully connected neural networks are not used for very large data sets with a lot of predictors simply because they are too slow, right? If we have for image processing, so we can easily have millions of predictors. So because for every pixel in our image, we have three predictors. And if we try to use a fully connected neural networks, then the number, the total number of parameters is simply too large. It's just it's, it, it, we, we, we will not be able to train it. It's just too high dimension, right? So th this is why uh, they, they use some, some other types of neural networks. But if you want to use a fully connected neural network for a small data set with not too many predictors, you can, but again, since it involves, you know, setting too, too many hyperparameters and it's just too, too much headache, right? So in practice, usually, if you have a small data set with not too many predictors, it's easier to use a random forest or something like that instead. 
So still, uh, it is a good idea to, you know, to be familiar because, you know, these things are uh, kind of a hype these days, deep learning and stuff. So it's good to know about neural networks. So I have tried to cover some basics of the theory, but it was, of course, just a scratch on the surface. So for your information, for image processing, they use convolutional neural network. And recently they invented the so-called capsule neural networks. I don't know much about this this one, but if you explore this for your project, it will be very, very interesting. Uh, for text classification, so the kind of the older method is to use recurrent neural networks, but about three years ago, they came up with a newer method called transformer. And again, I don't know much about transformers. So if you explore these recurrent neural networks and transformers for your uh, project, this, this will be very interesting. Well, and th there are some, some other types like uh, generative adversarial networks. So this is kind of a fun thing. So instead of doing um, regression and classification, so that they do things like create art, um, they produce fake photographs, or they, they play Go and chess and so on and so forth. Right? So this, this is kind of a completely different paradigm. So generative adversarial network. So um, in any case, deep learning is a large and quickly evolving area of mathematics. Uh, so as I said, just the, the idea of use a linear rectifier instead of sigmoid function, it is a very recent idea. So it was it started just nine years ago. So some types of networks like capsule networks and transformers, they have been around for just two or three years. Um, in, uh, in two weeks, we are going to look at a GLOVE model, so which is also based on neural networks, but it is unsupervised. So it was invented six years ago. So all of this stuff is very new. And you know, so as you are doing the discourse, so people are probably inventing new types of neural networks and they're coming up with some, some, some fun ideas. So if you are interested, you probably can take a special course on, on deep learning, right? So I just tried to cover the, the very, 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 very simple basics of, of the, this area. Okay, and that was the end of the lecture. So please do the quiz. And after the quiz, there will be just a summary and a wrap up.